Hi, uh, my name is Danielle Golan, and I'm the Science Communications Specialist for NASA's LPDAC. Um, and a while ago, I was looking into Astro data and how users use the data, and I was really interested if OpenStreetMap uses it. And I came across within the OpenStreetMap online community a lot of confusions and questions and just general things where people were like, I don't understand what Aster is. So I thought I'd come here today to kind of answer those questions. So by a show of hands, does anyone know what Aster data is? Okay, have you used it before? Okay, perfect. All right, so today I'm gonna to provide a brief description into the LPDAC along with general information about Aster and then also show you how to access the data if you're interested in using it. So what is NASA's LPDAC? We're the Land Processes Distributed Active Archive Center, and we're celebrating our 27th year at the USGS Earth Resources Observation and Science Center, we really like acronyms, the Aero Center in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, and Eros itself has been around since the 1970s. We're one of 12 NASA Earth Observing System and Information System, EOSDIS DACs, some of the other DACs provide information on like the atmosphere, ocean biology, snow and ice, but we specifically work with land data. And our vision statement is about advancing access, understanding, and use of land remote sensing data sets to the user community. So what exactly does that mean? Well, we process data, we archive data, we distribute data, but we also like to show users how to apply and understand the data. So what types of data are available? Well, we have a lot of data available. Surface reflectance data, vegetation, temperature and emissivity, all kinds of data. Basically, if you're interested in learning about the land, we have data that's available or we're getting more in the near future. Um, we, these data are available in a variety of temporal and spatial resolutions. And as I just mentioned, we have even more products coming over in the next couple of months. We have a bunch of products and then also in the next couple of years. So if this is something you're interested in, definitely keep checking back in with the LPDAC. So where do these data come from? So our newest sensor is VIRS, which is onboard SWAMI, and VIRS is a continuation of MODIS, which is a continuation of AVHRR. So with VIRS and MODIS, we're seeing a larger picture and lesser detail. So if you're thinking about writing a letter, it's gonna cover the entire envelope. And then our Aster sensor is onboard Terra. It's a taskable sensor, I meaning it has to be turned on to capture data. It's providing more higher detail in a smaller area. So if you're thinking again of that envelope, we're looking at just the postage stamp. And then we also have community products. These are derived from one or more NASA Earth Observing System or EOS missions. And currently this is an Aster Global Emissivity data set. And then we also have our NASA Measures products. These are projects that expand our understanding of the Earth through already existing satellite measurements. So it's kind of cool. We're reusing the data in unique and different ways than it was, it was originally intended to be used for. And these products cover emissivity, vegetation, land cover, and elevation, and we're getting a lot more down the pipeline that are gonna be even more different things. But today we're gonna to focus specifically on Aster data. So if you are interested in any of those previous data, please feel free to stop me and talk to me or visit our website to learn more. So first, it's important to note that Aster is the Advanced Spaceborne Thermal Emission and Reflection Radiometer. Aster is in a partnership with NASA and several Japanese organizations. And perhaps most importantly, the take home from today is that previously certain Aster scenes cost money to download. However, as of April 1st, 2016, all Aster data are available to the public at no cost. So some Aster fast facts. Aster was launched on the Terra satellite on December 18th, 1999, and the data are available from 2000 to present. And Aster contains three telescopes, the visible and near infrared, or VNIR, is a 15 meter telescope, which contains a backward looking telescope aiding in elevation data. The shortwave infrared, or SWIR, is a 30 meter telescope. And an anomaly occurred on this telescope, and it was retired in April of 2008. However, the data prior to this date are still valid, and they're frequently used for geological applications. And then we also have the thermal infrared or tier 90 meter telescope, which captures thermal data and it captures data at night as well. So Aster is useful in a variety of applications, including understanding what minerals are on the surface of the earth, observing changes to a city over time, observing the health of vegetation and how it changes. It's also used to actively monitor 1,540 active volcanoes around the world with the Aster Volcano Archive and there's even more applications as well. Perfect. 
Okay, so Aster data coverage. Here's a map of the coverage from March 2000 to May 2017 that contains less than 20% cloud coverage. So you can see we're definitely covering a lot of land surface on the Earth. And you may notice that some of these areas, particularly the orange areas, have been covered more frequently than others. So as I mentioned, this is because Aster has to be told to turn on to capture data. It's also a pointable sensor, which is advantageous, meaning that as it's moving across, it can move and point its telescopes to capture data, and it doesn't need to be directly over the area that's been tasked to capture. And the image on the screen is an infrared false color Aster L1A, or expedited image, of the flooding of the Red River in Colfax, Louisiana. This image was captured on March 21st, 2016, after several days of heavy rain and tornadoes had impacted the area. So Aster, this is an Aster L1A E image. It's an unprocessed and expedited data product. So expedited data are specifically beneficial for capturing the aftermath of natural disasters. These data are typically available within one hour of capture, but they can take up to 48 hours. And they can definitely be useful during times of open street map communities when they're working on mapathons to cover areas that are hit by natural disasters. Since Aster is taskable, as soon as it's over the area, it can take the image, it can point its telescopes, it doesn't necessarily need to wait 16 days to capture the area again. And in this image of Joplin, Missouri, we can see the damage from an F5 tornado that was back in 2011. The left-hand image shows the area before the tornado. The center image was tasked as an expedited image to capture the area right away. And then the right-hand image captured the area again a little later. In the second and third image, we can view the tornado track to understand how big the tornado was, where it went, and most importantly, what areas were hit the hardest and need aid. Another Aster product is Aster L1T, or Precision Terrain Corrected Data. This is a relatively new product that provides geometri sorry, geometric and radiometric corrections to the data. It also provides a full resolution browse GIS ready Aster L1T GeoTIFF, which can be added into your favorite GIS program and is ready to be viewed instantly and worked with immediately. And that's for whatever telescopes were tasked at the time to capture the scene, we'll have those. The spatial resolution for this data might be a little lower than what you're used to working with, but as we can see in this image of London, I don't know if you guys can see that, the green was probably not a great choice as a background. Um, but as we can see in the image of London, larger features are still traceable. So you can see the river, you can see different parks, and the freely available data can be used during Mapathon events to provide information for areas that are either still lacking a lot of data or maybe have some outdated data. And then finally, we have the Aster Global Digital Elevation Model, or Aster GDEM version 2 data. This is a freely available global elevation data set that covers near pole to pole coverage and is cloud masked and gap filled at 30 meter resolution. Um, I know currently on the Aster Wiki for OpenStreetMap, it's addressing that version one's the most recent, but version two actually came out in 2011. Version one was back from 2009. And so with each new version of Aster GDEM data, additional Aster scenes are added on top of the previous scenes to provide more accurate coverage. So the elevation data is built off of Aster stereo optic scenes. Aster version one was composed of 1.2 million scenes, and version two is composed of 1.5 million scenes. Aster version one had some limitations that contained anomalies and artifacts that kind of limited some of its usefulness for certain applications in certain areas. But version two was created to address these limits. And so version two provides improved coverage, improved spatial resolution, and a better water masking. It's a substantial improvement over version one, but we do admit there are still some artifacts that could exist. And currently there are citation and distribution requirements for Astro DM version two. Specifically, when you download the data, we ask that you tell us what your research interest is. So there's a drop-down box with a couple different categories, and we just want to know what the data is being used for. So for example, if you're studying health, or if you're studying ecosystems, those types of things. And then also, when presenting or publishing the data, you have to agree to include Astro GDEM is a product of Medi and NASA. But the exciting thing is, Astro GDEM version 3 is coming soon. We're looking at around mid-2018 to release it. And just as version two was an improvement over version one, version three will add on another 350,000 more Aster scenes and also improve water body delineation. 
And um, the most important thing to note about AstroDude in version 3, it's not going to have the redistribution and citation policies that version 2 had. So it's freely available, no limitations, no restrictions. So before we talk about how to download the data, I want to recap some of the benefits. So all Astro data are globally available at no cost. The Astro sensor is taskable, which potentially aids in covering natural disasters more quickly. And then even though it's a relatively lower resolution than the data may normally work with, it can still be helpful for tracing larger features such as forests, parks, lakes, coastlines, those kinds of things. Um, even some larger buildings. Um, in the presentation I gave yesterday, we could see the hospital had completely been, after the tornado, the hospital had been destroyed and so they completely removed it. And you could see that within the Astro data. It also provides a lot of data over islands and volcanoes. And we have the freely available global elevation data. So if you're interested in elevation data, definitely check it out. And some data are available as plug and play, GIS ready, GeoTIFF browsers. So you don't have to worry about anything. You just drop it in and go. So how do you get these data? Well, if you're interested in obtaining or ordering all Astro data or any other data distributed by the LPDAC, we recommend NASA Earth Data Search. If you previously have been using Reverb, it's important to note that Reverb is being retired at the end of the year. Um, so we definitely recommend that you use Earth Data Search as it's going to be its replacement. And it's relatively user friendly. It provides previews of the browsers so you know what you're gonna get before you download the data if those are available. And then if you're interested in obtaining elevation data right now, I recommend the Global Data Explorer, or GDEX. This is where you can get reformatted and mosaic Astro GDEM version 2 data. Um, here we can see a preview of Boulder and the surrounding areas when you click that you want to download this data. One thing to note, GDEX is currently in the process of being decommissioned. So it's not going to be around forever, but if you're just wanting to get version 2 right now, you're really excited about Astro data now after this talk. <laughs> Um, this is the best place to go and in, to go and obtain that mosaic data. And then in the future, when Astro GDEM version 3 data are released, I recommend using a brand new application we just released recently, the application for extracting and exploring analysis-ready samples, or APPEARS. Again, we love those big acronyms. APPEARS allows you to download mosaic SRTM version 3 elevation data currently and will allow you to download the Astro GDEM version 3 when it's available. So in this form, we have the input form. So here, oh good, you can see my mouse. You can name your file. So anything you download, it's gonna have this name attached to it. So really easy for file management. And then you can upload or draw your own polygons. We also have a point system. So if you're just interested in specific values for spe specific points, you can also do that as well. You'll enter in your time series information. And then you can enter in the layers that you're specifically interested in. We have a lot of NASA products and we're adding even more not NASA specific products in the future. So Landsat data will be added to this. Some Daymet data is gonna be added to this. Currently a lot of it's mostly LPDAC data. And then you'll submit your file format. So if you want a GeoTIFF or NetCDF and then also the projection you want the mosaic data to be in. And then once your request has completed, you can interact with the data via box and whisker plots for looking at polygons, or if you entered in those points, it'll give you a time series where you can interact with the points and see if you did like temperature data, on what day was this point, this temperature. And it's really cool because it's clickable, interactive, you can filter by quality information. It's a really great tool. I strongly recommend checking it out. And then once your request is completed, you'll receive several files, including a JSON file, so you can share if your colleague is if you're in Boulder and your colleagues in Washington, D.C., you can send that JSON file to them and they can have in the exact same parameters that you searched and get the same results you got. So super helpful. And then this is the same area of Boulder and the surrounding area that is Astro, or this is SRTM data. But this is the output mosaic file. So this was a lot of scenes to create this one image and it did it seamlessly. If you're running a large product, you can just start it overnight and it'll be ready in the morning. It's pretty great. Um, so that brings me to the end of my presentation. If you have questions about the data later on, please feel free to contact our real live in-house user services team. And also feel free to sign up for our listserv. Um, I personally send out updates about data and tools, examples of how the data are being used, data tutorials, all sorts of things, videos about twice a month. And if you're currently using Astro data or any data distributed by the LPDAC, please feel free to stop me at any time during the conference because I love hearing about how people use our data. Um, so, at that point, are there any questions? And that was a lot of info. 
Um, you mentioned archetype, or you mentioned the issues that you had with the uh, first aster. I was wondering if you could elaborate more, and were there any needs that you had besides um, just more coverage? So some of the issues were, and our website explains all the issues in detail. We have actual documents that say exactly what goes into, are you talking about specifically for the elevation data? Okay, yeah, we have documents on our website that say exactly what the issues are, where they are, and then also how Astro DDEM version two was fixing those issues. Um, so that's probably the best place to check out because it's different things happened on different areas and it just depends on how local of a scale you want your elevation data, those types of things. Um, One second, sorry. Uh, for the original Aster data, there was a Japanese website where you could actually just like download the whole thing. Mm -hmm. uh, but that seems to be gone, and now we're getting redirected to these kind of non intuitive websites where you have to pick an area and it's like, oh no, that's too much, that's not enough, mm -hmm. wait, we'll send you an email. I mean, why isn't there just like an FTP site or an Amazon Web Service bucket or just some way that, I, I mean, how do I get all the data? So if you want all the data, um, it depends on which Aster product you want. And also depends on the file size that you're interested in. Um, if you're specifically interested in certain types of Aster data, they're on our data pool, which you can just point a tool to the data pool and just download everything that comes in. Um, that's definitely a great way to do it. There's also the Earth Data Search. You can just add in every single thing and download it all at once. Um, I mean, it depends on if you want a specific, I mean, do you want like the entire global, just everything we've got? The entire global DEM. Oh, for the DEM, yeah. So for that one, I would recommend probably Earth Data Search. You can download everything all at once. Really? Okay, so I can download the global, the entire world's worth of It's going to be a huge file, but as far as I'm sure, you can download everything, yes. All right, I'll give it a roll. Thanks. Yeah, sure. And also, I can give you my card, so if you have further questions, I can help you out. I think he had a question up front. So I have a question uh, for the elevation of 5,337 feet, it has collect. Mm -hmm. For the collateral at elevation of 5,337 feet, uh -huh. it has collect high elevation. As far as I know, yes, it should. In Denver, it nickname my high city, one feet equal 5,280 feet. Huh, okay. It's not flat, high elevation. Right. Oh, okay, got it. Um, if I'm interested in your presentation, uh, I would like to send me email to me. Yeah, definitely. And I think we can send the presentation to OpenStreetMap, and you guys will house it, right? Moderator? If we send the presentation, it'll be online, right? I would have to think that that would be true. Yeah, I think so. But it but is I not my realm of you. expertise. Yeah, sure. All right, well, thanks. Want to everybody give a hand for Danielle? Um,